Hello and welcome to this video. In uh, this week's project, we want to work on review routing. And I've got my drawing up here and I went ahead and, and filled it in with my values. And um, I want to answer some questions. I want to look at RTR. And from RTR's perspective, how does it know how to get to DevNet, CorpNet, and the Internet? PF1, same thing. I want to look at PF1 and I want to ask myself, how does PF1 know how to get to DevNet, CorpNet, and the Internet? And then Server1 and DC1, how do they know how to get to those same resources? Now, I've got some notes here. And you can pause the video and just take a look at these. But this is what I want to talk about in this video. It's a review on routing. Let's go ahead and get started then. Here's the network that we're building. We're not completely built yet. And this week we're adding RTR and then we're setting up all of the pieces to make uh, routing work within this two network infrastructure. So let's start with my, my, uh, my notes here and let's look, take a look at RTR. So RTR is new to us. It's a PFSense box that's being configured as a router only. Simple to do, post-installation, you just go in and, and, and check a box, and that turns off its firewall feature and makes it a router only. It's also being used as a, a DHCP relay agent. And when you think about that, let's look what happens here. We want to be able to move Win 10 between the two networks. At, at some times, we want it to connect to DevNet, and at other times, we want to connect it to CorpNet. And in either case, we want it to pick up a DHCP reservation. When we install DHCP on, uh, on DC1, we created a scope for CorpNet uh, IPv4, IPv6, and DevNet IPv4, IPv6. And we also then created a reservation for, for Win10 on both of those networks. When Win10 is over on the DevNet side over here, it powers up and it puts out its DHCP discovery packet. But remember that routers, they stop broadcast packets. DHCP discovery is a broadcast packet. And so RTR is going to block that. The way that we configure RTR to support DHCP is to make it a relay agent. And it's real easy to do in PFSense. There's a, a setting for IPv4 uh, and a setting for IPv6 and you enable them and then you just tell them, you tell RTR that it, when it receives those discovery broadcast packets to forward those over to DC1. And so you give it the actual IPv4 and IPv6 address of DC1 as part of the configuration. A very straightforward to do and there's notes in the project on where to go to make these settings. All right, having, having taken a look at making RTR a DHCP relay agent, then the next thing we want to look at is how does it know how to pass packets? So when a packet comes in on the, on the DevNet side, how does RTR know what to do with it? And the three questions we want to ask is how does it know how to get to DevNet? How does it know how to get to CorpNet? And how does it know how to get to the Internet? Okay, those are the three questions. Well, a router knows about everything connected to its own interfaces. Well, what do I mean? Okay, well, if you look at RTR, RTR has one interface over here in DevNet and another interface over here in CorpNet. Therefore, RTR has local knowledge of both CorpNet and DevNet. We don't have to tell it anything about CorpNet or DevNet because it has interfaces connected to those networks. Does that make sense? A router always knows about the interfaces that it's connected to. And in our case, RTR knows about CorpNet and DevNet because it has an interface in each. But what about the internet? Well, that's a good question. RTR, like, like any router, has to have a default gateway assigned. And its default gateway is the path it takes for any, any network it does not know about, literally any 
unknown network. So it knows about DevNet, no gateway required. It knows about CorpNet, don't use the gateway. But for any other network that it needs to get to, anything else that's not known, use the default gateway. And so we set the default gateway of RTR, we set it as the internal interface of PF1. Okay, does that make sense? All right, let's move on. Let's look next at, at DC1 and Server1. We can treat them the same. They're, they're both similar. So the questions, again, we ask ourselves is how do they know how to get to, to DevNet? How do they know how to get to CorpNet? And how do they know how to get to the Internet? Okay. Well, DC1 and Server1, they have local knowledge of CorpNet because they're connected to CorpNet. So there's nothing that we have to tell them about CorpNet. CorpNet is good. They're, they're fine with CorpNet. Now, to get to DevNet, there's actually two choices that we can do here. One is we can let DevNet be treated as an unknown network. And as an unknown network, then DC1 and Server1 would use the default gateway. So let's take a look at that path. So over here, we, we want to go to... Uh, say that, that we've got Win10 connected this way, and we want to ping from DC1 to Win10. If we do nothing, then here's how it will go. The ping request will go to PF1. Now, if PF1 is configured to know about DevNet, then PF1 will take that packet and say, oh, that packet, I know where it's at. It will send it to RTR, which then RTR will deliver it to Win10. If we do nothing to DC1 and Server1, that's how a ping packet or a trace would go. You could try it. You could trace route. Now, it is dependent upon that we have routing rules assigned uh, on PF1, and we haven't talked about those yet. Now, what I'm asking you to do in class is to modify this default behavior and make it more efficient. I want you to tell... DC1 and Server1, how to get directly to DevNet. In other words, I want that ping packet, I want DC1 to know that when it looks at the IP address over here of Win10, 172.18.18.120 in my case, when it sees that, that network, it says, oh, I know how to get there. And so it does this. It gives the packet to RTR, which then delivers it. That's what I want. Now, to do that, you create... The way I'm going to ask you to do it is to create a static route on DC1 and Server1. And the static route will say it'll, it'll, have, uh, it'll have a destination with a mask and then an interface, how to get there. And so the destination is 172, in my case, 172.18.18.0. The mask would be slash 24 or 255, 255. 255.0, and the interface will be this interface right here. One seven, not one seventy two, one ninety two, one sixty eight dot eighteen dot two. So that's the static route that we're going to create on both server one and DC one. And by doing that, then DC one, if we trace route, if we trace route over to Win ten, we should see that the trace goes from DC one over to RTR. And then from RTR to Win10, that's our goal with that. Then the last thing that we need to do is we, we need to configure PF1. Okay. PF1, if we go through our three questions, DevNet, CorpNet, and Internet, let's take a look at what PF1 knows at this point. Okay, well, it knows about CorpNet. It does. Because CorpNet is a directly connected interface. So it knows, it knows the network ID, and it knows how to pass packets to CorpNet. It knows how to get to the Internet because it has a default gateway. All routers, all routers have a default gateway. So it has that. Okay, so if it's good with getting to the Internet and getting to CorpNet, then what about DevNet? Okay, we've got to do some work to inform PF1 about DevNet. Right now... PF1 does not know about DevNet, even though DevNet is behind it, even though it's on a network that's after it, it doesn't know about it. 
So what we're going to do, and I'm going to do a video walkthrough with you on this, is we're going to go into PF1 and we're going to tell it. We're going to actually do three things on it. We're going to create new gateways, not default gateways, but just gateways. And they, they get one and one will be for IPv4 and one will be for IPv6 and they'll be to DevNet. So we're going to create a gateway. Again, not a default gateway, just a gateway. How do I get to another network? Okay. After we create the gateway, then we're going to create routing rules. And the routing rules will use like that, those particular gateways. Okay. When we do that, we've got it covered. So then what we're doing is we're, we're statically telling PF1 how to get to DevNet, both for IPv4 and IPv6. Now you're thinking, okay, well, isn't there an easier way? Like, what if I have a network that has lots of routers? Yes. Yes. Then we use dynamic routing. We use router advertisements. You guys are familiar with that. That's how that would fit, fit in. If we, if we enabled router advertisements, and I'm purposefully not enabling router advertisement because I want this to be the kind of like the, the uh, cementing moment of how, how routing works. I want this to be the, where, where it, you know, where you've got this and, and you've got it rock solid. If we just turn on router advertisements, then routers learn about each other. PF1 learns about RTR and RTR tells it about DevNet and, and we're done. But I don't want that. I want you to understand what PF1 knows and what PF1 has to be told. And then I want you to tell PF1. Now there's one last thing here in this. Okay, and it's not routing related necessarily. Are we good with routing stuff? Okay. The last thing to talk about is that PF1 is, is not just a router, but it's also a firewall. And that makes things a little bit different. The firewall side of PF1, we have to create rules that will allow traffic from DevNet. PF1 out of the box, we, it has some default rules. Remember that when you install it, it calls this WAN and it calls this LAN. And, and I re, re, renamed mine to CorpNet. And, okay, so it has WAN and it has CorpNet. And its default behavior is it creates what's called an allow all rule for its LAN interface, or in my case, CorpNet. So those rules are created out of the box. You and I didn't have to do it. But they are specific to CorpNet. They're not just general allow all rules. They're, they're specific to the IP address ranges or the network IDs on CorpNet. So the net IDs. If you go look at those rules, they will specifically say that they're for, for LAN or for CorpNet. When we then add a router, RTR, and DevNet behind it, these rules will not allow packets to pass from DevNet. Why? Because Dev, DevNet has two different network IDs. What we need to do to allow, allow traffic to go out through PF1 from DevNet is we need to create two additional rules. We're, we're going to create uh, two more allow all rules, one for IPv4 and one for IPv6, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. I want you to think about it and I want you to get your own drawing. I mean, I've got my drawing here where I filled in blanks. This week, this is where we want this all to make sense and to come together for you. We, I want you to be able to take any of your hosts and be able to trace route and ping back and forth. I'm opening up the firewall to the internet out here. I'm opening up ICMP. So you can also ping from the internet and trace route from the internet. I want you to be comfortable and troubleshoot as needed to get IPv4 and IPv6 communicating efficiently within your enterprise. This is the week to make that happen. This is the week to, uh, to figure that all out. We only have one other assignment this week, and that's to verify that our split brain DNS is working. And your, um, your internet side of split brain is, is most likely already configured from last semester. And the internal side is almost all configured, maybe all configured from an earlier project. So all you need to do there is test. And if you find there's a problem, troubleshoot it. So our focus this week really is on, on digging deep with routing and routing rules 
and to understand how packets move and to understand the nature of, of firewalls and, and how to allow traffic to go through them. All right, I'll wrap up this video. And in the next video, we'll do some walkthroughs on PF1 and, and get some of this stuff set up.